are living in the fifth dimensional consciousness where we are creating our reality faster than we can imagine. And 95% of our lives are run and created by our subconscious programming. Imagine how your life will be when that 95% subconscious programming is set to attract, manifest, and create everything you desire. Would you like help to change yours? Join Tamara Oviat in living in fifth dimensional consciousness here on Ohm Times every week, where she will connect to the source energy and change your subconscious programming by deleting your negative belief systems. Tamara is the founder of Sacred Activations, a subconscious metaprogramming process that rewires your brain and shifts hundreds of your belief systems so you can break away from lack, pain, and suffering and take control of what you want to create in your life. Tamara has helped hundreds of thousands of people worldwide, and she is here to help you too. It's not about fighting what you don't want. It's about creating what you do want. And the only way to do that is to change and upgrade your subconscious programming. Let Tamara help you create magic in your world. Join her now for Living in the Fifth Dimensional Consciousness. Hey, Gary, welcome. <laughs> welcome to Living in 5D. I'm uh -huh. really excited to have you on as a guest, um, Gary Bonell. He um, teaches and does private sessions in the Acoustic Records. You started in, what was it, 2001? Uh, doing Acoustic Records? Yeah. No, probably in 1978. Wow. Yeah, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm substantially older than I look. Yeah, you look amazing. <laughs> Yeah. So, so how did you start in the Acoustic Records in, in 1978? I mean, that's incredible. Well, actually, um, uh, due to some circumstances in my early childhood, uh, I had a head injury. And as a result, uh, I started going spontaneously out of body. And uh, that was beginning at the age eight. And... Uh, the injury was a result of being pistol whipped by my stepfather. Oh <laughs> so, wow! Yeah, he was he was a uh, he was a just a nasty person. So alcoholic and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I started going out of body, and just as I was about to quit because I wasn't running into anybody over there, um, I met a midway being. Uh, a person who was an Akashic master, basically. So after a period of time, uh, he introduced me to the Akasha. So from that point on, I was going into the Akasha pretty regularly. So you were going out of your body and you're talking to this midway being? Yes. Yeah, he became Why would you call him a midway being? What does that mean? Well, um, he, he literally... Um, would be considered not human and and not angelic. So he okay. was basically an aspect of, of the mind of Gaia, as we all are. And the Akasha, the complete field of the Akasha is the mind of Gaia, the earth spirit. So, so each human has two records. They have a spirit path and a soul path. So uh, he showed me how to connect into the Akashic record, which is the soul path, and the book of life, which is the spirit path. So how to consciously do that at that age was to go out of body. I had not been yeah. introduced to meditation or anything yet. So Yeah, I remember going out of body, but I would go out of my body and like cruise around the playground right. while my teacher was teaching. All I heard was wah, 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 you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I remember going around the playground and then coming back into my body. But um, that's absolutely amazing that you started working with somebody in 1978 and going to the acoustics. Well, Have this, you this happened when I was eight. So this was back. This was back um, a long time ago. Uh, yeah. I was born in 48. So uh, my how how I met this midwear. Uh, 
was my youngest, my younger brother got hit by a car and I would go out of body to the hospital room, which was quite a distance away from where we live. And I would work with him. And then one night when I was working with him, this being showed up. And, and like I said, there was nobody to talk to, nobody to communicate or relate to in the Akasha. So right. this person showed up, it was quite a shock. So yeah. I ended up running away from home at the age of 12. That was either run away from home or kill my stepfather. <laughs> was Those were the yeah. choices. <laughs> and I uh, yeah, I ended up with uh, my biological father. Uh, and then that didn't quite work out. And I uh, went to live with his mother, who was a direct student of Pram Paramahansa Yogananda. So, oh, fantastic. So yeah. you've been mentored since you were a young child with yeah, since spirituality I, awareness. Yeah, since 14 years of age. That's so fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, she saved my life, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. yeah, it's been fun. It's been very interesting. I've I've used the Akashic Records to help guide a company that myself and two other men had created. And we in 12 years, went from one retail store to 35 of them. That's so, fantastic. Yeah. So it's it's been a, a life of knowing how to use it and also knowing how to help others in the process. Yeah. So that guided you with your business to create 35 stores. And then did you guys sell those stores? Oh, yeah. We did an IPO and then we sold it. Um, nice. Yeah, uh, we did an IPO and raised a lot of cash. And then this this guy in New Jersey, a guy named Ace Israel, decided he wanted a public expression of his company. So we it was almost like a forced takeover of our company. So we had a lot of cash reserves. And, and he came to our uh, board of directors meeting and uh, stockholders meeting and made the stockholders an offer they couldn't refuse. So that's why we so since then you've been been doing the acoustic records. Yeah, that was in 1986 and uh, I don't just do the acoustic records. I have been uh, I went around the world in the 80s uh, looking for enlightened people wanting to see what that looked like, what the reality of that was. Um and I had uh achieved in school. I, I have uh, an undergraduate and a graduate degree in psychology, and uh, I wanted to see how all of that information fit against Jung and, and uh, you know, Freud. And, and I wanted to, because of my connection with Paramahansa Yogananda, uh, I wanted to see how that was playing out. And so I went to India, and I went to Europe, and I studied with the Cherokee Indians and I did all these things. And so the, the school that I developed in Tokyo is about uh, mystical study. It's a, we have a year long program. Uh, we've graduated a whole bunch of incredible uh, students. And it uh, takes the student through self-knowledge to uh, how to live in a self-realized state of mind, how to live in collective consciousness without being burned out by it. <laughs> so. You know, that's a really beautiful point. And I know this takes a year to learn all of this, but is there something you could tell our listeners now that could help them? Because a lot of people are so confused and, and locked into all these different consciousnesses right. that like to, that's not serving them or helping them yeah. live their lives. And they're living in a lot of fear and overwhelm. Yeah, I um, I really have had uh, such a wonderful opportunity to meet so many teachers. And uh, like you say, there are so many approaches to this, but there is one basic underlying thing that if people knew this, then their life would, and, and when I say knew it, if they really integrated this knowledge, it would change their life. And that is that we are we are threefold beings, humans. We have a, a physical body that's, that is coated with genetics. 
we have a spirit that has that's evolving and has evolved over millions of years. Our spirit has been every form of life on planet Earth, and it elevated to what we think of as the human level. And then we have an eternal soul that is actually a particle of the mind or the consciousness of creator. So here we have this body and this spirit that's a manifestation of, of the mind of Gaia. That we live within Gaia's mind, within the earth spirit's mind. And then we have this eternal soul that is witnessing Gaia's manifestation, that is the creator. So if, if we under, really understood this, then we would also understand that every, every word we say is like we're reading off of a menu at a restaurant. Every word we say is a command to manifest. Yeah. And to the degree that we can release our inner conflicts, uh, then, then our manifestations can happen you know, quickly. There is very little time between the command and the manifest form. So that that changes life. That that base concept really can alter a person's uh, unfolding journey. So by being mindful and realize that you're ordering what's going to happen next, mm -hmm. to really write it down and focus on that, right? Or or just be mindful of it of of what you're saying. Well, and and. It, it's not just us, but it's also knowing that every other human is that as well. It, it doesn't matter the, the size of the human, the color of the human. Every human is a threefold being. And, mm -hmm. and knowing that, and that's where your collaborations really begin. We, we get rid of our prejudice and our bias, and we realize that, that we are all working together in this collective soup of of awareness and consciousness and it's when we have uh, bias that we really you know begin to to get out of the state of being a threefold being and that's hard to do in this political world right now <laughs> yeah so wouldn't it be important then since we are a collective consciousness and we're threefold and we're all in this together all connect right. together then it would be smart for us to focus our focus on peace within that collective consciousness to, since everybody's in that energy anyways, and we're all the same in the, all the same place. So mm -hmm. focusing the peace, the love and the joy and the happiness, then that affects us in our life and the whole collective, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's, you know, uh, I, you know, the string theory, uh, promotes the idea that if you have two, uh, two quantum and they're identical and they're even separated by the universe, what happens to one automatically happens to the other. So yeah. we are all connected. And that's what right. the knowledge of being threefold is, is that we are all connected. Exactly. Exactly. And like you said, string theory, I love this. This is absolutely perfect. So yeah. If you do to one here, it affects the other one here. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter how far apart it is. Right. See, that's how I think all of us are together. And whatever each individual is thinking is affecting the whole. Right. right. So, and, and then also we're running off of a lot of what the collective is thinking. So we're acting out what somebody over there is doing too, or we mm -hmm. can if we plug into that or allow that part within us and our, in our collective, cause it's just, mm -hmm. it just goes in, but you've got to be aware that it's coming in and you go, go, oh, wait a minute. I want to think this way instead. Right. Well, the, the hardest thing for most people, um, uh, they, they think of spirituality as something other than their every moment existence. Uh, when they realize that everything is spiritual, uh, yeah. everything it's not it doesn't take dogma or doctrine it, everything is spiritual and when they really when your person really hits that they begin to also understand that um, enlightenment 
while enlightenment doesn't make you immune to life, um, it certainly allows you to see life. Yeah, and and can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Uh oh. Um, okay, the enlightened state. So, so our souls are a particle from the mind of creator and our body and our spirit are manifestations of Gaia's mind. Everything is mind. When, when you uh, become enlightened, everything is a manifestation of your mind. Even the people you associate with, you have a consensual reality that that we subconsciously agree to. We subconsciously see steps leading down. All of us do, uh, and we, you know, we we share gravity and we share certain uh, laws of physics. And the reality is, everything is your mind. So what you're saying is we're creating everything, kind of like being in a holodeck and creating all the characters around us. You are, everything is mine. You, yeah. everything you encounter, the surface of your desk, the walls, the windows, the people in your life are manifestations of your mind as you are manifestations of their mind. So we right. connect through that consensual agreement at a subconscious level. Okay. Yeah, and I know a lot of things happen on a subconscious level before they show up in our reality, or right. even a lot of agreements and things are planned out. Mm -hmm. Well, and uh, the interesting thing is when you're born, you know, your existence is totally reliant on these, these gods and goddesses that are in your life. They supply you with your comfort, your food, and all they request from you is that you please them, that you learn right from wrong, that you that you uh, take on their ideology and their notion of life. And at some point, you then leave that comfort and that nourishment to find yourself. But that's that training stays with you. Yeah. And, and so, uh, and. You know, I've spoken about this. I've worked with corporations since the early 90s on this particular subject, and that is giving up the need to be right. And if when you can, when you can give up the need to be right, then your brain chemistry evens out. When when we're right, then we get flooded with serotonin and dopamine and all the wonderful endorphins yeah, and yeah, we feel oxytocin. <laughs> We're all bloated ourselves. up. Yeah. yeah, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> and we get addicted to it. Yeah. We are literally addicted to those chemicals. And uh, and I've said that you can be addicted to, to, to the need to be right about how wrong you are. So then, right. then you look at people with low self-esteem and how they manage to get those same chemicals in their brain, it's finding evidence that they're not worthy. Um, so we've got all of this going on, and we begin to understand that 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 life is not ordered like this, that that we order it because that's how we've been trained. Yeah. Yeah. From zero to seven, from, you know what I really loved what you said you said these goddesses and these, you know, and these princess, or I don't remember what you called the them. Gods and, goddesses, yeah. gods and goddesses that were, gave you nourishment and yeah. told you, you have to think this way. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really true. I never even thought of it that way. I mean, because of you as a child and totally dependent on them, you do make them gods and goddesses. Don't sure. you? Yeah, absolutely. They, they're it. They're the law. They're the yeah, they're the law, and if it, if it comes with a lot of abuse and and or a lot of joy, you're still receiving and learning all of that from them, or a little bit of both. I you know? I um, it was so interesting early on, and because of my background in psychology, I um, when I do akashic 
readings for people, I always there's always that piece of it that's with me. So yeah. unfortunately, I inject some of that. Um, I had a client who was a very well-known football player, a defensive lineback. And uh, he came for some sessions. And in, in one of the sessions, he started weeping just uncontrollably. And, and uh, I let him go ahead and finish that process. And then I asked if he wanted to share any of that. And he said, you know, um, I have felt so much guilt all my life. Um, I have a brother, a younger brother, and uh, I'm I'm the sports figure. I'm my father loves sports, and and I'm the guy in the family. So when we would sit down for dinner, I would get a steak, and he would get spaghetti. Ah, because it was thought that I needed the steak to build my, you know, body so that I could be a football player. And he, he had carried that, that with him for so long and it controlled so much of what his choices and what he would do in life. And it's yeah. something that simple that can have such a profound effect. So it's not just our gods and goddesses when we're young, it's our siblings and how we relate in that familial setting. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. I want to go back to what you were saying earlier, if that's okay. Sure. You used to out of body travel and go visit your brother in the hospital and work on him. Right. How long did you do that for? How long was he in there? Uh, he was in there for two months. He was in a coma for oh, wow. two months. Uh, they didn't think he would live. Uh, he was uh, the car that hit him uh, had been speeding out of town. We lived in West Melbourne and, and, the highway in West Melbourne was either side of it was littered with bars. And so people would come to that area and drink like crazy. Um, and we were running across the street to get cardboard boxes to build a fort. And uh, he was hit and the car was going really fast. And so it broke ribs, it broke everything. I mean, he was a mess. And uh, they, totally expected him not to live but I also would hear a voice when I would go out of body I would hear a female voice that would give me instruction and so I would do what the voice said and <laughs> this midwayer uh, this Akashic master uh, his I called him Eli that was his name Eli and Eli um showed up at the hospital and he helped me fine tune my ability to project energy while I was in my astral body. And um, he also instructed me on how to substantially influence physical matter. And that's how I found out where my biological father was. And uh, I took him a note I wrote a note. The astro and, yes. energy? Yeah. Tell me about that. That's This well, is really cool. Um, I, uh, like I said earlier, I was, it was either, either leave home or kill my stepfather. And I actually came extremely close to it. He was a carpenter. And uh, one day on the job site, I used to have to go to job sites with him and clean up the tools and the pieces of wood. And, and one day he had been drinking and he took, took out his belt, the sound of the belt coming out of his pants to beat me. Um, and I said, you're not going to do it. And I literally almost killed him with a, with a two by four. And, um, and it was after that, that I decided that I really needed to leave. So um, I wrote a note and I took the note to my father. I found where he was and I put it on his desk and uh, made that connection and then hitchhiked across from Florida to California to wow. be with him. <laughs> and that was at 14? No, that was at 12. I'm so impressed with you right oh, now. Oh, well, no, no. no need to be. There are kids who've left home at, at 10. I mean- you know. I left home at 15 and never yeah. returned. Yeah. Yeah. 
but wow. I mean, 12 and to hitchhike from yeah. Florida to California, that's wow. I almost stayed wow. in New Orleans. There was a, a lady who picked me up see why. <laughs> on the side of the road. And she she was the proprietor of Nikki's China Doll on Iberville Street. So for a couple of days, I got to have a shower and rest there. But uh, <laughs> I don't even know if I've told my wife that story. Hmm. Yeah, That's but, funny. Yeah, but my father and I um, didn't get along. Uh, my dad has a photographic car, had a photographic memory. Uh, he got through Stanford with that uh, uh, magna cum laude, that kind of thing. And yeah. um, and uh, it, uh, I have an eidetic memory, but a photographic memory is very different. And uh, when you're around somebody with a photographic <laughs> memory, it, it's very difficult to relate because they can just glance at something and have it memorized. And right. so my father and I didn't get along and I went to live with his mother, Rowena, who was a student of Paramahansa Yogananda. So, and where was she at? Was she also in California? Yeah, she was in the little town of Los Gatos. And I had actually been born there. Uh, my parents married and I was born there. And then my mother, when they divorced, went to Florida to be with her biological family. And uh, my father stayed with his new family in California, of course. So, yeah, a lot of adventures. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's where I, uh, I totally wanted to be um, uh, in music. On, we lived in, in the hills of Los Gatos going towards Santa Cruz. And on one side was Yehudi Menduhin. And on the other side was Segovia. So these are brilliant musicians. Uh, okay. Yehudi Menduhin is a violinist, Segovia guitarist. So I started studying guitar. And... So you started going and practicing with him? Did you have no, a no, relationship? No, no, uh, no. Just uh, knew of them, but no relationship at all. Uh, okay. But was inspired because on if the wind blew from his house, you could hear it. And it yeah. just, you know. So I got into some garage bands in the 60s and... Um, and uh, ended up meeting some really high profile uh, people uh, in, um, I met Johnny Cash uh, and Johnny Cash became a friend and uh, June Carter Cash. And then over the years, Johnny introduced me to a lot of people. Um, and nice. so I had clients in the industry and that expanded it out, you know, to include a lot of people, so. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Acoustic Records. Yeah. So Acoustic Records, um, you tell me about the future and stuff we were talking about before the call, mm -hmm. 2027. And I liked what you're sharing with me. Do you want to share that? Well, it's uh, it's OK. Um, lately, there's been a lot of you know, stuff in the news about UFOs and uh, in Japan, USOs, because there are a lot of underwater bases kind of thing. And yeah. uh, we have had uh, off-world beings on this planet since we were bioengineered. So uh, the beings that bioengineered us are thought-based beings. They, uh, we think we can think of them as eternal. Uh, and these thought-based beings with all of this exposure and revelation now uh, in the media and everything, we're getting prepared for their uh, reveal. They are going to reveal themselves and explain who they've been and, and why they've been and what has brought us now to this state. And uh, what happened back a very long time ago when we were being engineered out of twofold, we were a body and a spirit, and the Gaia's vision was a threefold being that could become eternal. So these off-world beings, they placed little knots in our DNA. And when an individual hits a certain harmonic or when the collective consciousness hits a certain harmonic, those knots are released and a mutation takes place. 
So um, recent, recently, one of those knots began to release. And that knot is to take humans to a non-gender type of being. And all of these off-world beings are non-gender. They can reproduce at will. They can decide they want to reproduce and they reproduce. Now, we have that in our, you know, in nature anyway, in, in our world. But it, of course, it hasn't been with humans. So that knot has released and it's created. I, I saw a study that was done at the beginning of the 1900s there was a group of academics that wanted that wanted to understand the effect of the modern world on on human consciousness so every 10 years they would take a survey and one of the questions on the survey was how do you identify with your gender okay and, hold that yeah hold that right there i'm really sorry we've got to take yeah. a break and this is okay. the perfect okay thrilling okay. moment so everybody comes back because we okay. want to hear this this okay. is getting really really good you okay. guys will be right back we've got we've got to take a break ohm times tv imagine becoming a super influencer reinvent yourself invest in your brand and then manifest your success with a robust spheric approach Ohm Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Ohm Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Ohm Times Magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times, open yourself to the possibilities. Do you want to go deeper into sacred activations, which is a subconscious metaprogramming process? Tamara Oviat is inviting you to visit her website at tamraoviat.com to sign up and get lifetime access to free seven activations that you can listen to anytime you want or as often as you need. If you like what Tamara does and like to incorporate sacred activations into your life, she also offers live webinars, master classes, and practitioners training to further support your healing, manifestations, and expansion. There are hundreds of activations on her website that address different aspects of your life, money, health, relationships, intuitive abilities, and more. Head over to her website at tamraoviat.com and experience the magic of sacred activations. Thank you for listening. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a, a mile in my, in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse. Walk, Walk a mile in my shoes. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Um, I'm, I'm with Gary Bonnell here, and we are talking about non-gender um, becoming human on this planet and also a knot in your DNA. So please um, continue. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> when, you, when you think about Earth's uh, reproductive system, it's pretty inefficient. You have to have a male and a female for the most part. And uh, there are a few species uh, that don't require that. But if we're to leave Earth, if we're to go into, uh, into another reality even, we can't have that reproductive system. That won't work. Uh, especially if we're traveling long distances to another you know, uh, planet. You know, you, if what happens if one of the sides of all perish in the process and you're left with one gender? So 
that harmonic knot is taking us to non-gender. So, so in this study they did in the early 1900s, they asked the question, you know, do you identify with your gender? And 0.08% of the people question their gender. And uh, uh, now they just took it in the year 2000, or 2020 rather, and 48% of the people yeah. don't identify. Now, the problem is, is that the collective consciousness really uh, gets weird around homosexuality or uh, gender fluid or, you know, any of these other choices. Our modern world seems to think this is, you know, of course, evil and sinful. And, but it's, it's in response to this knot unraveling. The, and, and there's another knot that's going to unravel. <laughs> so what's the other knot that's going to unravel? Well, and there's no way to know exactly when this happens. It, it has happened to some people because they've reached that harmonic individually. But collectively, uh, the uh, next knot is that our bodies will not be uh, gravity-based. They won't, you know, the physiology of our body will be thought-based. So, so the energy centers, the chakras in our body will become the organs. And they okay, will be the thing that that motivates and keeps the body alive. Well, yeah, they do that now, though, don't they? Yeah, well, to a certain degree. But uh, in in the 10 year, the shift point from, from the old cycle to the new cycle was between the years 2001 and 2011. That shift point, before that, we were in a 13,000 year duality cycle. And now we've right. entered we've entered into a 13,000 year unity cycle. So okay. unity is what's happening to us now. The problem is we have carried so much inner conflict and unresolved e energy, incarnation after incarnation throughout that duality cycle that, that as we enter into this uni cycle, unity cycle, all of that has to get purged. Yeah. And we isn't that what we're it. doing now on the planet? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're purging. Totally agree. Yeah. And have been for the last, really for the last hundred years, we've been purging. But now it's really taken, you know, a, a turn. Um, but the next one is we will be thought-based, like our, uh, the off-world beings who have bioengineered us. Right. So we won't even be physical in a body anymore is what you're saying. No, we will have a physical body, but we okay. can, but our thoughts then, like I said earlier, everything is mine. So, right. so in that state, then not only are we manifesting our reality, but we are now literally a piece of our reality where we are interconnected to every thought and it's like we are not living in a progression of time and we would live within 11 dimensions of space. Yeah. And uh, in Gaia's mind, there are six adjacencies. Um, what do you mean by that? There are realities that exist alongside our reality. Okay. And they are just as real as our reality. Uh, right. There are portals on the planet that thought-based humans can go through those portals into those other adjacencies. Yeah, I do that sometimes. Yeah, so so basically, this is where it's all going. We are going to be like those beings who bioengineered us to threefold. Then we will become extra-dimensional, not just multidimensional. So what do you mean by that? Well, uh, we'll be able to to be play wherever we want to play in creation, and be able to show up, like yes. even take our body with us, astral travel, and take our body with us. Right. You your physical body won't then be determined by physics. Right. Right. So you'll be you know, able to you'll be able to you know put your thought. Say I'm here, and I put my thought into China. And then my body disappears here and shows up in China within 
a minute or two. Well, and and what there are examples of illumination, and that's basically what it is. You become illuminated. And uh, like when we think of Buddha, uh, Buddha, many people witnessed Buddha on one side of the Ganges and then in a flash was on the other side of the Ganges. Right. And it's that. Yeah. yeah. They talked about this in um, the book, um, Masters of the Far East. Right. Yeah. How how people would just manifest in a whole nother country. And right. these guys were documenting everything. Sure. Um, now, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can ask to travel and be someplace, but I can't been able to physically show up there yet and i want to do that <laughs> well um yeah i would i would like that process as well <laughs> <laughs> my wife loves to travel so i would like to have her do that as well with me. and then she can go on the plane and you just join her there <laughs> and you never lose your luggage and you know yeah yeah you don't quite, have to worry quite a that. different existence yeah <laughs> yeah i mean because i know that's possible yeah. And and what we're talking about seems really far out for most people. Um, right. You know, and it is. It's this is far out stuff. And um the fact that it's happening and it's happening yeah. at this particular time is not a it's not a coincidence. And there's right. a very real reason why it's happening. So so we have gone through repeating cycles 13,000 years of duality 13,000 years of unity and we keep going alternating and we've done this uh, threefold beings are affected because of the soul consciousness so uh, what's what's happening this time is different eternal souls in the middle of this cycle eternal souls that have been incarnated with humans are going to leave they're not going to be on earth anymore. They're going to another system. And as they leave, they're going to elevate human spirits to soul level. So after they leave, humans on earth will be a human body, a human spirit, and a human soul. They will be completely of earth. And and uh, that's going to be an amazing time for Gaia because her manifestation, her vision will have been complete. So, but you say when these beings leave the planet, this is going to happen. Isn't it happening now with them here? Well, again, it's um, individually. Uh, you can you can shift your harmonic to the point where you can become thought based. Right. Uh, those beings, those off-world beings, are different than our eternal souls. They are beings from another system. Right. Our eternal souls are like particles from within the mind of our creator. So, so creator is going to go look at another system, basically. So all of those eternal souls that were capable of um, collaborating with spirits, bodies and spirits, they are going to another system. And when they leave, as they leave, they will ascend, literally ascend human spirits to the soul level. So humans will still be threefold even when they're gone. Okay. I'm a little lost. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the aliens that are here, and there are a lot of them. Yeah. Um, the aliens that are here, um, when they announce, when they start announcing, it'll be the thought-based off-world, off-worlders that announce first, and there's a reason. A thought-based being cannot be destroyed. Right. And humanity has a propensity for destroying things, that it that doesn't yeah. look like it or doesn't act like it. Yeah. So we get that all the time. We see that the results of that all the time. So uh, these beings, uh, that thought-based beings, are going to be the ones that say, see, we aren't trying to harm you. We are witnessing you. If we've been here millions of years, if we wanted to harm you, you wouldn't be here now. Right. Yeah. 
So, so they people will try to destroy them, and they'll find out that they can't. So that's going to be a huge shift for collective consciousness, a major shift, that they okay. can't destroy something they don't like. Okay. That's going to be big. And yeah. now here's the bad news. Um, my new book is about this. So, um, my my editor and my translator are having a real interesting time with it. Um, humanity goes back millions of years in our solar system. We've been on, okay. this is the third planet we've been on. And uh, the history of that is very interesting. And uh, the reason why those worlds don't exist now is because of the sun and how the sun behaves. And every once in a while, the sun releases a huge charge of energy that's like a, a static electric charge. It's, it, it's like when you rub your feet on the carpet and then touch something. Well, that goes out through the solar system. And then depending on where the planets are aligned, the planets get hit with this. Earth got hit by a glancing blow, Mars took a direct hit. So um, geologists like to think that the Grand Canyon was created in, by the Colorado River. Well, uh, the Colorado River flows through it, but the Grand Canyon is the scar from that glancing blow. If you look at Mars, there's an identical a scar on Mars, but it's the length from Los Angeles to New York, the Grand Canyon would be. So uh, what happened was the, one of the uh, planets that was, there was a moon-sized planet uh, or a planet-sized moon orbiting Jupiter, and that was destroyed, and that's the asteroid field. And at the same time, Mars, the atmosphere of Mars was destroyed. Uh, Earth has some effect of that. Uh, we, as the ice caps melt and everything, we'll see plant and animal life that suddenly got frozen. And that's when the percussion of those explosions took the atmosphere down to the upper atmosphere, it was on the surface of the planet, which created a problem. So in the future, around 2057, is when we probably will have the next glancing blow. Okay. So then we'll move to other planets then like we've done three times before? No, it'll reset life on Earth, but not destroy all life. It'll just be a reset. And and it the Earth will wobble and, and uh, the core of the Earth will be affected like it was the last time. And uh, human population, uh, at one point, the human population had dropped down to around 30,000 individuals. And they lived underground. And we are now finding those underground places, like in Turkey and in the Ural Mountains, um, these huge underground cities where they survive. Yeah, huge. yeah. yeah. there's um, still a lot of underground cities with people oh, living yeah. in it. Yeah, in China, there's quite a lot of them, actually. And yeah. so I got sunlight. Coming. Oh, there, that's better. So basically, um, our planet can beautifully support around 2 billion humans. Last week, we crossed the line of 8 billion. Right. Um, human population is going to drop dramatically between now and 2057. Okay. And the aliens are announcing in 2027 um, they're announcing uh, as a way to help humanity through that process of, of, you know, what to do in the future about what's about to happen. There's no way they can alter the sun's actions. So, you know, they've tried a couple of times, actually. There's a video of one of their large ships that uh, was drawing energy from the sun so that they could uh, try to um, 
find a way to orchestrate the sun's behavior. Now, when we had a glancing blow to Earth, the Earth had two moons in orbit. It had a large moon that was about two thirds the size of the current moon, and it had a smaller moon, and they were in elliptical orbits. And when that percussion wave hit, it, it hit, it crashed the smaller moon into the larger moon, and they both left. Uh, the larger moon is a, a moon or, uh, right now around Neptune, and the smaller moon was basically destroyed and is part of the asteroid field. Um, our moon is artificial. You have heard that. Well, it's an observation platform. You have heard that too. Okay. It was it was put in orbit around Jupiter to observe human development on Maldek, the planet that was destroyed, and Mars. So uh, humanity was being developed on both those planets simultaneously. And when that strike hit, when the sun strike hit, our moon was on the other side of Jupiter and wasn't damaged by that strike. And to stabilize Earth so it could have human life, they took the moon from Jupiter and parked it in a perfect orbit around the Earth. That's super interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> um, I know that sounds so so weird. Um, there yeah, is no, and you have it coming out in your new book. Yeah, yeah. What's the name of the book? Uh, it's called Revelation. Uh, and it's uh, the story about 12 days of, of light. It's the story about how when a person begins the process of transformation, that they go through a 12-day period. And it's about that. It's about the history of, of uh, humanity in our solar system. And it's about what's, what's about to occur. So. Now, Baba Vanga, who was... Uh, this wonderful prophet. She was a, a child who went blind and then uh, was able to really connect to the Akasha. And uh, she, she predicted a, quite a number of things. Uh, Baba Vanka uh, read the Akasha um, and her reading of it was in 2027 that an alien race would come to the earth but they would bring an asteroid and hit the earth to get rid of humanity. And then they would take over the planet. That was how she interpreted the information. So that's not what's going to happen. But so and then your interpretation of this is? My interpretation is the aliens or off-world beings will uh, announce their position. They'll say, we've been here all this time. They'll even, they'll even talk about um, the historical figures that they have been to help guide humanity. And um, <laughs> that, that gets to be very interesting. And uh, they will help prepare humanity for this sun activity that's coming up. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, it, it could look like, I mean, we've gotten very close to uh, being hit a couple of times by asteroids, but we're not, there's no alien army bringing an asteroid. That's not going to happen. Yeah, where I live in the Yucatan, Mexico, it's been hit by an asteroid. Sure. And that created all of these underground cenotes. Right. So we have all of these caves full of water that interconnect. Right. There's exactly. you know, hundreds or probably even thousands of them in there. Yeah. yeah, I live on top of all this. It's really an amazing energy. <laughs> yeah, I, I've i never been to the Yucatan. Um uh, Chinchen Itza has always interested me. It's nice. Um, I'm about two hours from there. Okay. Yeah. I lived in the Caribbean. I lived on St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. Oh, nice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it, the world is an amazing place. And it is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The, the,
dot online. Okay, so the knowing way dot online. Right. And do you still do personal readings? Do you teach acoustic records? Yeah. I know you said you have a um a mystic study group in um Tokyo that yeah, we, I have I've been working in Tokyo for over 30 years and we, I have a wonderful team there and they they take people through that process and and I visit Zoom now. It's um I zoom in. So uh yeah, it's uh, it's I still do it. I still work with people um on my website theknowingway.online there is a a schedule you can if you want to have an appointment or a session then you can do half hour or an hour all right perfect gary yeah. thank you so much you gave us oh. a lot to think about i wish we had more time <laughs> i mean there's so many subjects we went over that mm -hmm. i i would like to go into deeper and yeah. um i want to thank you so much for oh. being here you're absolutely amazing so <laughs> thank you for doing this i really appreciate it thank you very much yeah Okay. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Hi, everybody. How, what a cool call, huh? Is it Gary? Yay. So check out his website. Um, I promise to do some activations um, at the end of each call. And Leonard gave uh, uh, Rena. Hi, Rena. And Clay Del Carmen. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. What am I going to do? We're talking about the acoustic records. You know what I want to do? Fear of the future. Let's clear out our fear of the future or any overwhelm or anything we feel like about a Death Star. And somebody else wanted some grounding techniques. So I will also help bring you into Mother Earth and you can connect and ground. Sorry, I closed my screen accidentally trying to scroll down here. Um, so go into your heart and think about fear of the future. I connect with source energy when I run this energy. So fear of the future and overwhelm. energy of the Death Star, that fear. Also, I want you to imagine that you go to Mother Earth. And connect into Mother Earth's heart chakra. Taking a nice big deep breath. Bringing your energy into Mother Earth, taking in a nice big deep breath. Feeling calm and relaxed. Peace, joy, happiness. I want to thank you, everybody, for joining me today. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Um, sending you lots and lots of love. If you don't know who I am, make sure you check out my website, download some free activations. We are here to help you shift into your power and um, be present in this moment. Thank you.